So now we're going to talk about the standard deviation. The standard deviation measures the amount of variation we have around the mean. So it's related to the variance, whereas the variance describes how far apart the data is around the mean. Uh, the standard deviation is going to describe how all of that occurs. So many of you are familiar with the bell curve, and in that bell curve we have a mean at the center. Most of the data points kind of congregate around that center point, around that mean. And that's because there is a tighter bunching up of the data points, especially in a normal distribution. So in this case, we're going to look at the standard deviation and we're going to try and learn how to describe it using the score column for each one of the countries. So this is a score that's been added to the spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to create bins. Since this number goes from 0 to 100, we basically are going to set bins at every roughly every 10. So what we'll do is we'll add our bins. Those are our 10 period bins. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use something called data analysis in tools. Now if you don't see data analysis or solver in tools, what you want to do is you want to go to the add-ins. When you go to the add-ins, you'll basically see analysis tool pack and solver add-in. You want to check those and basically include those so that you'll see them inside of your tools section. When we go to the data analysis, we're going to choose histogram. And from histogram, what we're going to do is we're going to use the input range as our data set. This is the entire column for the score, being G7 through G201. Now our bins are going to be from J6 through J16. Now we've included J6 here, which is the actual label. So we need to turn this on to make sure that it understands that this is the actual label and not something else. We're also going to have it output it to L7, which is around here, through N16. When I click OK, you'll see that it gives me the bins and the frequency. So there's one in the tens group, there's three in the twenties, twenty-one in the thirties, and so forth. When we add these all up, you'll see down at the bottom, it's basically giving us uh, 194 of them. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to basically, since we have that, let's chart this out. So when we chart this whole thing out, we'll basically take the frequency and we're going to insert a chart. We will then choose column. When I choose column, you'll see that it gives me this nice chart title. And that pretty much looks like a normal distribution for the most part. A little bit uh, ta quicker tail over here, but this is fairly normal distribution. We should see the nice bell, and here's our mean somewhere in this, uh, in this vicinity, and therefore we will be able to assess that a majority of the data points are hovering around the mean. So let's take a look at how we can figure out what the standard deviation is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need the variance of those items. So we're going to use our variance formula from before. We'll use the var s. And then we know that this will go from G7 through G201. And this is our variance. We'll give it a little label here. Now, the formula for the standard deviation is very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of the variance. So we'll just take the square root of this number and we have our standard deviation of 15. And we'll describe what that is in a second. Now, Excel has an, a standard deviation formula itself, which is pretty simple. It's just like the variance. The only difference is we're going to have STDEV for standard deviation. And we will take the standard deviation of our entire range, which is G7 through G201. And you'll see it gives us the same number. OK. So now what we've done is we've actually created a small table here for the rules of the standard deviation. So what this basically means is, is that one standard deviation is going to be plus or minus 15.06 around the mean. And our mean we've actually calculated as 49. So now what we're going to do is if we have one standard deviation, we will take one standard deviation minus, so that means we take our 49 and subtract 15 and we get 34. And then we'll take one positive standard deviation, which means take the 49 and add 15 and you get 64. So our formula is basically take the mean and subtract 1 times the standard deviation, which is 15, and on the positive side, the plus. This means that 68.27% of the data will fall between 34 and 64. And we'll take a look at how that actually works when we look at percentiles. Our two standard deviations will have 95% of the data. 
And what we'll do is we basically just multiply our standard deviation by 2 and subtract it from the mean. That gives us 19. And then we add to that as well, the 2 times the standard deviation, 79. So two standard deviations will go from 19 to 79. And three standard deviations will then go from 4 all the way up to 94. And that represents a majority of the data. So here we've created a table of percentiles. If you remember correctly, we're able to use the percentiles to determine the, the data point at which 1% of the data lies before it, 2% lies before it, 16% uh, lies before these particular values. So we can see that the 50th percentile, 50% lie below 50 and 50% lie above the number 50. So what we've done is we've basically created these percentiles that correspond to these data points roughly. If we take a look at, say, 68%, that means if you cut it in half around the mean, that means 34 would lie below the mean and 34% would lie above the mean. So that would equate to the 16th percentile and the 84th percentile, subtracting 34 from 50 and adding 34 to 50. When we look at those percentiles, we end up with the numbers 35 and 63. Now, if you look at the standard deviation of 34 and 64, that's pretty close. And that basically tells you that the first standard deviation goes from 34 to 64, which corresponds to the percentiles of the 16th percentile, the 84th percentile, the stuff in between. When we look at the 2 percentile, we get 20.76. So that means the lower part of the 2% two, 2 will be 20.76 or lower. And on this side, the upper part of, say, 3% or roughly 2% would be greater than 79. And if you look at our standard deviation, two standard deviations, that, that is, it goes from 19 to 79. So this inner part corresponds to 68%, and this second deviation corresponds to 95% of the data. And when we do the same thing for the lower 1% and the upper 1%, we end up with 99.7% of the data falling between in this range. So you can see how the standard deviations obviously relate to the percentiles.